Rapungi when he joined the seven, Darmok and Jalad on the ocean, and Shaka when the walls fell. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the seventh rule with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. When the recording started. Uh, my name is Ryan T. Husk, and today we're doing a review of Lower Deck Season 2, Episode 2, Kayshawn, His Eyes Open. Special guests today, Mr. Rico Anderson and Dr. Trek, Larry Nemechek. Hey, guys. That Thanks rhymes. Called me in, in my, in my yeah, post-Vegas stupor. Yeah. So Rock and I figured, like, here? we could take this episode off with Rico and Larry. Man, you guys could do your own podcast. Yeah. Oh, who, who's to say that we haven't? <laughs> <laughs> On the secret side of podcasting. No, I am totally happy to be a slice of the pie here. This is great. Good to see everybody. Same. We should all be like, uh, have like Tamarian names, like Sirach when the recording started, uh, Rico when the dumb joke cool. fell, things like that. Oh, gosh. <laughs> How did I Maybe that's my joke? name. <laughs> that's that's mine. what I want to know. How did I get the dumb joke? <laughs> well, when, when it fell <laughs> all right so uh i guess i guess we might as well talk about this episode because there is so much stuff <laughs> packed into 22 minutes or whatever as larry said what what did you say about this uh the the freeze frames larry I said, well, I said your normal Lower Decks is Freeze Frame City, but this was like Freeze Frame City on steroids or, or whatever. Quadro Freeze Frame steroids County. Yeah. Freeze Frame <laughs> County. Really? <laughs> um, this was the county seat of Freeze Frame County. Yeah. Yeah, uh, which is why uh, having uh, Rico and, and Larry is so good on this thing because their, their knowledge of original series far surpasses mine or Ciroc's, right, Ciroc? <laughs> I'm going to definitely say mine. I don't know how far far surpassing yours, but definitely it mine. Because I, I, I realized that I was watching it. I was saying there's a whole bunch of stuff going over my head and I just I just don't even know it. But I know that it's going over my head because you could tell, right? You know, yeah, you enough, but tell. you knew enough to know what you didn't know. Yeah, see? right. And, yeah. Right. Right. And as much as I know about the original series, someone tells me Larry will probably blow me out of the water. I, with his level of knowledge guys i was like wait there. did they i got all excited when they said federation standard and then i didn't realize they had said it once or twice in discovery and picard so anyway i was watching for some historic things here and and i was anyway it was there was yeah you could just you, you're gonna wear out your freeze button on your whatever you've got digital with this yeah, one as, as digital one does device. When they watch lower decks well let's right. start but off real was, quick again that with the two things before. the two things i did catch there were two NAMs that I caught, which we call uh, we call them NAMs. They're non-appearance mentions. That's when a known character or established character is mentioned, but they're not actually on screen. One was obviously Data, mentioned more than once. The other one was a fun one, Thomas Riker. Uh, Sirach, he came on to Deep Space Nine in like the third season, uh, which was cool. That was Jonathan Frakes. Um, right. There are a lot of more, a lot more references about that uh you know when boimler ends up splitting in two and when they the guy makes a joke about well, don't you want to debate the merits of a of a robot's personality or whatever the hell it was um so beyond those i don't know let's you guys want to start with rico rico do you want to hit us with all the references you caught <laughs> Because I know Larry's going to clean up everything in the cracks that we missed. No, don't oh, yeah. be so sure about that, because some of that was I haven't had it on, you know, this division screen to go look at something yet. But no, we also got messages from associate producer <laughs> Anne-Marie Siegel and super, super fan Don Crandall, uh, Strock, that you and I uh, talk about fairly often when he sends us lower decks and Picard references. And he's got to be on the show yeah. sometime because this guy's original series knowledge is scary anyway what do you got for us rico well it's it's a bunch of things and and i i gotta say as soon as as soon as they beamed onto that ship actually as soon as they said um hey yeah there's this uh, collector dude who's dead mm -hmm. we need you to go through it and see i was like oh, okay <laughs> we, we about to they about to everything plus the kitchen sink so we we beam over there as soon as you beam over there you're like what's that what's that what's that what's that 
Mm-hmm. And um, <laughs> one of the things that I, I noticed right off the bat um, was um, I get all these names always messed up. But remember that episode of Next Gen where Riker was playing that game with the uh, the yes. The, the, you mean the yeah. yeah? We saw that on like a on like a mannequin yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was one, and then of course the you know you saw batliths, you saw um, I think you call saw a couple of like Sulu swords, but then like you saw a bunch of giants, and I was really wondering what those because you saw like a a big giant with um with a, a science Blue uniform. Officer, uh, yeah, yeah. I know. Oh. No, you hit it. it no, I, I just blew. I, I, the thing I've been trying to remember for thirty minutes, I just remember. But go ahead. Yeah, and then I saw like a uh, like a prehistoric looking like uh, a thing, which I think might have been like one of the Vulcan animals and stuff like that. And Don Crandall says that was an Excalbian. What? Which one was? One of those the big thick animals, right? You got this, Larry. Okay. Well, the the Excalbion was Yarnak that made what Leighton original a Savage Curtain because no Tendi is like holding the head with all the eyes on it. And she says, "Look, it's Excalbion, buddy. That's what yeah. had the acid that dissolved the wall yes. and they escaped." But the Excalbion okay. was the thing that made Kirk and Spock see the images of Lincoln and Surak and um, and okay. and Colonel Green and Genghis Khan, and they fought they fought for good and evil on that planet as whatever. But that was an Excalbion. Yeah, there you go. I see the head. Oh, okay. Yeah. Tendi was Tendi was holding a head, and then she said, "Oh, look, it's bones, which could be just anything." But they that was in they ex, they uh, secreted acid and blah blah blah. So somebody whoever who whoever was doing that, like, hey guys, we need to let them get out, cut through the wall. What's the yeah. most bizarre thing we can go find? And they're like scanning for acid. Oh, look, let's say they're Excalbion parts. I mean, that must be the way they put this show together. Sirach, they have like uh, and actually, Sirach knows that uh, I did the same thing when I would visit uh, Rico's neck of the woods up in Berkeley. I'd be scanning for acid. Um, oh, God. That's dun, dun, dun. Yeah, oh, true. True it's statement. Really, it's okay. True, true story. I'm going to just it's gear it down here on manual. Larry, okay. Larry, you did say that it's the thing that made them see um, Lincoln and Genghis Khan. And then you said Sirach. Surak, Lost very good. Your name okay. for the the father uh, of Vulcan I, logic? Did you know? I that? didn't realize that I was the father of Vulcan logic. I just wanted to talk <laughs> about that a little bit. Surak Lofton. Before you know about who you are, is the father of uh, Vulcan logic. And yeah. excellent. You there know? was so much stuff, and there's a lot of things that was kind of going over that, that I don't even I should have taken better notes. But um, I. That was fine. Oh, you know, okay. <laughs> Take take the uh, the uh, the collection out of it. I think that's the first time. And correct me if I'm wrong. This is the first time that we saw like full on usage of like the sonic showers. Yes. Like, uh, like the way that they oh, did it. Oh no. We've never we really there. seen that. Like I think maybe Enterprise kind of a little bit. Yeah, that was a very. And I love how everybody just <laughs> booty ass naked, and just like hey. I put the that put the tease in teaser is what that did. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. I so they created sonic showers for motion picture because oh, we've got a budget now, and and Ilea comes up in a sonic shower, and then I think right, that really was the first the, one, right? One time, Bellana, when she's all depressed on Voyager, is in one, and then mm. uh, and then Enterprise had an early sonic shower, but I yeah, but you never saw like the communal. We're all going into the into the Roman baths kind of show. <laughs> with the yeah. control that was the first time i think i ever oh that's what a that's what a sonic shower control panel looks like that was kind of bizarre and they were all in there together like one big happy family one big dorm room yeah, yeah. so obviously nudity along with currency is not a big thing in the 24th century whatever that's what i'm thinking for everybody but boimler apparently because she made a note about it yeah i just I was, was a little 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 the sonic shower, shower is a lethal weapon you why sonic I... shower somebody to death Wow. Well, think okay. about it. It's like they're turning up the mm-hmm. hot water, yeah. you know, and <laughs> and so. Well, yeah. if it's supposed to, if it's supposed to be like vibrating your dirt away, that's what like when they were bleeding out the nose. It's like yeah, you know, yeah. somebody's head's about to explode. <laughs> yeah, I, they could have they could have left that out for me. I was. You didn't like the cartoon right. nudity. That was such a weird scene, man. It was, just it was like, so awkward for me. I thought it was a little bit awkward. I was like. 
this is why they don't show the sonic showers. You know, this is, <laughs> this is the reason. Uh, oh, especially, especially, they just introduced a black character. All right. We got our, our black character on the show. I forget Chet. his name, but Chet. He was in, yeah, he was in, I think, one, maybe two yeah, previous episodes. He was in yeah. an episode, yeah. He was, he was there to make Boimler a little jealous. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Of Mariner. But one time, one scene. Yeah. He doesn't what? give a shit. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> back to this, this this black character. I'm like, well, so they introduced this black character, and then they got him walking into the shower, and I was like, okay, this is one of those here we go. jokes right here. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was going to... Yeah. I was like, okay, they're going here. Are they really going to go to this direction? Are they really going? <laughs> I was like, why does the, brother, the first, ep- first big episode that the brother gets, you know, he's got to do full frontal nudity. I, I, gotta- I thought it was... <laughs> but he got it out of the way and now he can build his career uh, now he can start his career yeah. <laughs> exactly yeah uh, yeah um so yeah and i'm glad they blurred so it looked like they blurred certain things and uh, i like the little blur oh, yeah i was thankful for that this yeah this wasn't lower decks after dark for sure i wasn't looking closely enough to know if they blurred you guys i was hoping that was like the actual sonic dis- yeah, okay. i was hoping that was like canon but also did the good thing of blurring body parts you know like that was the sonic vibrations at work because we it was blurring the air and you couldn't see it's kind of like a heat mirage you know only I mean, mm-hmm. no they showed more on the enterprise i mean you know even with yeah. them not showing they showed but that's an oh. interesting point larry like like yeah when you're looking over a, a really hot street and you see that that heat mm-hmm. mirage kind of thing what if the sonic shower just does that naturally what what if it wasn't like them blurring it but the sonic shower just kind of happens to blur your narnar they were blurring your, ba- the guys your bathing too. suit areas yeah they were blurring the guy the kind of the chest area of the guys too which i thought was very you know equal minded of them but but then i went maybe maybe it was we'll just say that it's the sonic you know way i think that's a good point but then yeah, you can see the control panel are. really chart sharply. So maybe that's all just. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> that was the line. What do you do? Stop to debate the human rights of a robot? So that was like, <laughs> is, that a, is that a data reference? Is that an exocomps reference? Uh, I don't know. I think that's... it was for a data reference because there was a whole episode of, about that. There was two for exocomps as well, if I remember correctly. Well, see, my my take was and one of the aha, I mean, I this was one of those double take. time. I guess I had more than I was saying I had two laugh out loud moments here, but I guess maybe I had two or three. But one was when I went back to watch just the beginning again and get another shot of that room a couple of times. But this this the, that arc, the whole thing with the collectors guild was it to me was a throwback to Kivas Fajo and the most toys. And yeah, data was kidnapped as just a collectible. Mm-hmm. And that's when and even when. Rutherford's got his uh, Ruthy has got his thing and the guy's looking at him like, oh, that's a cyborg implant. And he's like, yeah, we're pretty rare. And she's like, careful, he's going to collect you. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, no. Here's my card. That to me was all a throw to Kivas. But um, Saul Rubinek played that. He wasn't even the first guy. He was supposed to be uh, David Rappaport, the little guy. And then he tried to kill himself. And in three days, they had to change it. And they went with Saul Rubinek, who was really great. He would have thrown off the dynamic of having big data being controlled by little guy David Rappaport. But the point was that 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 picture on the wall of the uh, collector that died, and he's in black. And then when he comes yeah. alive, he's wearing that two tone purple thing. That is exactly what Kivas Fajo Saul Rubinek was wearing in the most in the most oh. toys. It now, a another a quick thing to add to that, our uh, associate producer, Anne Marie Siegel, who's still out in Las Vegas somehow. She's still there three days later. <laughs> Has anyone heard she of mentions the name Kivas Fajo, which must have been a subtle nod to our good friend Lolita Fajo. It totally was. Yep. Not so. Whoa. Subtle. Whoa. Lolita got a. A mm-hmm. shout out in this episode. Yeah. <laughs> I, there's a lot of things that Where went over my head. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, in, she got a shout out in 1989 or 90. Yeah. But yeah. In this is the homage. The little okay. pin that's on that. It's thing. an homage to the homage <laughs> that was done for her 30 years ago. Oh, wow. Double homage. It was. <laughs> that's, that's so, right <laughs> what were the two <laughs> lines that made you laugh out loud, Larry? Well, it wasn't so much lines, but one of them was. Um, one of them was they keep playing with Riker and the and he says what is it when when they're they're partying and he says okay computer nightbird and the doors close right when you can't hear what the sound the song is which was the joke from when he's uh, live action on next generation 
late episode and they go on marina's or uh, deanna's teasing him about playing play nightbird play nightbird and uh-huh. it's like he's about to play it and they never you've never heard the music of it but it's like a joke and so they did the same thing there he says hey uh computer play nightbird and the door slam just as you can't hear it kind of like kind of like the gag of when morn is about to talk and they cut exactly he goes right. and yeah. they cut what was the other laugh out loud moan well i don't about laugh out loud but one was <laughs> one was uh one was the con, but no, one was the shuttle. And I didn't even think about the shuttle they took from the Titan down to the miners. And, mm-hmm. you know, it was only like the second time I was like, oh, yeah, the Titan number. Oh, okay, it's on there. It's, and I'm like, yeah, they've got that at such an oblique angle. You can't, re- they're not putting a name on that thing. And the second time I watched it through when it's coming at you, it's the shuttle Coltrane, which I guess is for John Coltrane. Oh, nice. It's like, oh, oh okay, that. fine. So Riker's like naming all of his shuttles for, <laughs> for jazz, for jazz course, musicians. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Makes so, sense. Anyway. The whole train. I like that one. Mm-hmm. Okay. That was the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, no, but the, the other thing, now are we sure that it wasn't a Dukes of Hazard reference? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Rico knows, right? I'm pretty sure when yeah. he said Coltrane. Yeah. Roscoe P. Coltrane. Yeah, I don't think it's a Roscoe P. <laughs> right, it's probably, I'm with, you're, you're probably right. I'm with Ciroc. Yeah. <laughs> pretty. I'm going to go with him. Not in, not, not in 2021. Yeah. On a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that show didn't uh, age very well. No, for us. no, no, it did not. Now, Ciroc, uh, speaking of which, you guys, we started a new thing this season. It just started, which is Ciroc's favorite line of the episode. Oh, yeah. Do you have one for us today? I do. I actually had two of them in this particular episode. Bonus. Uh, my first one is Jonathan Frake saying, great job, everyone. That's a wrap. <laughs> I remember him saying that on the set. So that's like his tagline when they're mm-hmm. done for the day. I loved hearing him say that. Wow, that's a deep like, cut just, then. Yeah, they snuck that one in there. Um, it was just good to hear that. So I was like, oh, look, they got that uh, great job, everyone. It's a wrap. Because I swear he said that many times while we were filming. Um, like the other one that I really, yeah, it was a little, it was a flashback moment. Um, and I think, by the way, Jonathan Frakes is excellent in, in pretty much everything he does, mm-hmm. right? I mean, from acting to directing and now voiceover. I mean, he's just, he's, he's consistently great. So mm-hmm. big right. shout out to him. And you should try his pizza. Yeah. I, I'm, I've seen the pizza. I'm not sure about it yet, but, but he's definitely <laughs> oh, awesome. Try guy. Just, just, try. just right. All right. All right. I'll have some pizza. Um, so yeah, Jonathan Frakes and his excellence. I love, I love the guy as a person. I think he's just a big personality, wonderful person and, you know, fills up the room with his presence. So, just his little line there I thought was funny for me. It was like an inside joke for me. But the other one that I really liked, the, you know, as much as or, or equally would be um, the line when the, when the alien behind you, Ryan, gets turned into a doll. Yeah. And, and the octopus alien says something to the effect of, uh, he'll be worth a fortune. <laughs> 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 I just was loving, I was loving that line. He'll be worth a fortune. This guy's a collector and all he was thinking about is what else he could add to his collection. So I love that line too as well. So this alien fellow is a Tamarian. I believe they make Tamarian mm-hmm. sunset beverages. Um, he was introduced in the episode Darmok next generation, or this type of alien was. And what's funny about them, and we kind of talked about it a little bit in our first episode review of the second season, is that they speak, everything is in metaphor for things past. Like they don't say, I'm hungry. They say, Ryan, at the refrigerator or whatever it was. And you're supposed to remember, ah, yes, this was the Mm -hmm. epic legend of Ryan when he was so hungry that he was at the refrigerator. I understand this. So that's why, and that that was like such a great running gag where he'd be, he would say, oh, you know, what's that thing? Uh, Darmok and Jalad at the ocean. They're like working together. Ah, yes. Or whatever it was. Brilliant. <laughs> Loved it. Yeah. Well, the, the original Darmok episode was all about like the, the universal <laughs> translator could totally tell you what he was saying, but you had still had no idea what it what it referred to because it was all about context. And it was a you know, it was a great Star Trek sh- story that can only be a science fiction story. But as usual, Lower Decks goes all meta on that and steps back and makes fun of it. Like, 
really? How does that work in real life? And how do you like the poor guy, instead of like, can't remember the words, he can't remember the, the phrase, the normal phrasing for the metaphor. Right. And it was like, okay, that moment when he first walks on the bridge and you think, oh my God, he's going to speak in Tamerican, uh, Tamerian, you know, gobbledygook metaphors. Tamerian. What does he say? You know, <laughs> Renelki when he met the seven or whatever it was. And You're they all, and they had that moment of Lord X, everybody staring like, oh my God, are we going to be, are we really going to be a 30 year old episode here? And then he breaks it, right. you know, and comes up, oh, that's okay. But then he still has the breakdowns, you know, and gives in. And um, and then Jet getting accused of being a brown noser because he knows the Temerian and, you know, Mariner's like, oh, you know, more like a suck up to him. That was my favorite line, actually, because that yeah. is totally Ryan humor. There was when he said, oh, where where did it go? But he says, like, you know, whatever at the whatever. And she's like, more like suck up at the damn. I wish I had the line yeah, yeah, Tanagra. Yeah. at Tanagra. Yeah. 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 He says it's no beast at Tanagra. And she goes more like suck up at Tanagra. That was funny. <laughs> A plus line for me, I think. Uh, Rico, you know, by the way, Darmok played by the great. Paul Winfield. Late great Paul Winfield. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was also. It was also in Star Trek Captain. Two. The Prophet, oh, that's right. That's right. You can see him in the twalk. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the what? The yeah. the Wrath of Khan uniform. That's what they call oh, okay. twalk. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> Read. <laughs> you can twalk yeah. the twalk, but you can't walk. Oh, that Paul Winfield. Really? A plus. Okay. Just look yeah. him up. Hmm. Yeah, he, he's from the uh, yeah he's from he's from the old school generation of he's uh, old school generation yeah he's like yeah. one of the old school actors mm-hmm. born and in was great in uh, Sounder with um, Sounder yeah Sounder the TV movie <laughs> Cicely Tyson Cicely Tyson good grief yeah yeah um, he played also oh god did he play was he a police captain in some formula police movie where the two guys Doesn't go off like see <laughs> Ciroc like they need their own podcast it's the yeah, Rico and Larry it. hour they could just like start it, it's feeding awesome. off each other like old okay. school knowledge a little bit of Star Trek here and there it's great <laughs> I'm just I'm enjoying coasting here I don't have to think about anything and I'm just sitting back just you guys are just giving along. Ciroc stuff to Google right now <laughs> This is great. It's kind of crazy. Yeah, I'm learning yeah. all type of things. Uh, it's my mission in life here to help the unknown father of Vulcan logic to find his destiny. Okay. <laughs> Not the young. I remember in the Terminator, he was actually in the Terminator, the original oh, really? one. That's it. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. And he yeah. played on L.A. Law. Hmm. For, yeah. I don't know how long. But no, he he was part of that 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 old school. Just you know. Just that old school. Uh, well, he did a movie with Sidney Poitier in 1969. So, oh, the one, the, the Sidney Poitier of, right behind Rico? Yeah, movie called yeah, The Lost Man. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, uh, he's old school as it gets when, you, when you've yeah. done movies with Sidney Poitier. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, and uh, probably a guy that these days would probably have a lot more and better parts to get than he could mm-hmm. in the 60s. And Certainly earned it, yeah. Just well, saying, you know. Yeah. A lot of a lot of negative representation back then. Um, yeah. Well, just I'm just thinking quantity of just availability. You know, mm-hmm. like everybody who didn't get. Well, he was available. There was just. Oh yeah, know. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. But you know, name the ethnicity and name the not male gender people that didn't get. You know. Oh well, yeah. Just didn't yeah. Have the roles. Yeah, the diversity. Yeah, like role. like him and Brock Peters, where they they were kind of like of that that uh, mm-hmm. uh, group of actors that that were you, you always saw them doing stuff so and sydney and sydney yeah sydney mm-hmm. um yeah so well he got to break through to that upper echelon as far as main yeah. mainstream i'm air quoting here mm-hmm. audience, yeah. but yeah yeah, yeah. okay sure. now speaking of mainstream your thoughts on the packlets we've seen them in previous episodes my favorite part of theirs was when they said hit the wall with the saw you know, they're really milking the pack leads for the they're right because it's a race that's right for humor, you know. So now it's funny that they're the big bad, but they're just they're like idiots. Our snacks. <laughs> our snacks. Yeah. 
they are they are such the lower decks adversary to have it's like mm-hmm. no we're not going to go up with romulan's klingon's borg it's like let's make the packlids it's, i love how whenever they show one of their glommed on ships because they're almost like they're like the the cheap uh junkyard borg because the borg assimilate things right. and it all becomes this big gleaming mishmash and the yeah. packlids assimilate things and it's yeah. just kind of stuck on you know so they've got like pieces of all these people's ships hanging off but i love how the middle of all their ships is that little triangle ship you saw yeah in there you know in um in peak performance that thing with the little pointy nose that kind of hangs down like like a duke like a duclaw or something or a doolip or something but it's, it's like that little original ship is in the middle and then all this just stuff just glommed on like it was somebody that had a trailer and they just kept adding on <laughs> that's a good way of putting it too yeah it, it's, it's kind of like the homeless encampments i see a lot of out here in los angeles it starts yeah. off with a tent but the next thing you know it's got a barbecue grill and a porch. tarps a lot of tarps and things yeah and couches yeah. Target it just tarp. keeps getting bigger tarp you, factor guys, six and tarp you guys factor. are the right ones to ask they mentioned the dead collector and with lower decks it feels like everything is a subtle or not so subtle nod to something but they said mm-hmm. they mentioned the dead collector's name was Kerner Hawes. I don't think that's a reference to anything. And they also said the terrorists tried to use it to blow up Staircase 58. That also felt like it must have been something, but Starbase. I don't think it was. Starbase 58. I thought they said Staircase 58. I mean, it's probably Starbase is probably. Oh, I, well, I was watching with the captions on that. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> that's what I usually do. I blew it there. So what was there a Starbase 58 or Staircase 58? We'll, we'll say it's unknown. I saw the captions, so I don't know what the hell you talking about. <laughs> I'm lost. So I guess that's uh, I a no. Idea. That's just, that's my answer, Ryan. I have no idea. It's, uh, it was, a, it was only uh, an Okuda Graham reference from a D- from DS9's whispers but it was nothing to do with the story it was just on a big chart of people coming and going oh what so they found a safe thing that had not been I, it's really funny sometimes when they when they get into something that's dicey that they think someone's gonna go you know they'll say starbase 58 and, and somebody say uh you guys in episode 2.9 of voyager starbase 58 is supposed to be 12 not point nine like you know it's like they get these safe things that are mentions and throwaways but they've never been grounded in anything so i mean it's very cool they go they had been mentioned before ish but not in a like important way so they can just have it be a throwaway and mm-hmm. oh look we're starting the new canon thread of oh a terrorist attack well it's it's canon now and this this veruvian ore and they said it's a veru it's like who knows who they are so it's like it's really weird that they're laying down all this canon for real that somebody five years from now is going to take and run right. with it's canon and fodder just like it's like air thread you know to what it, where it came from yeah i i have a i have a small theory about the giant science science officer bone structure let's hear it because i heard one too and i know larry's got it's probably okay. all the same thing so, that was my I, other laugh out loud moment but go re- yeah <laughs> well and and i i okay so didn't spock grow hella tall in the animated series yep. exactly yep so i obviously it wouldn't be spock, and his name was but, paul forrest no, I'm just kidding. Shout out to Tall Spot, <laughs> Paul Forrest. Paul Forrest. Uh, that would be fun, actually. It was um, actually a clone of Spock because Spock talked to his big self. It was that. a clone. So basically, that all intents and purposes was probably him because who else? Oh, I right. hoped it was. <laughs> like no and you know it's the way they it was just there and it was it wasn't like you looked at the skull and said well that's a vulcan skull it's like how do you know but the fact that it was like this mountains of blue or you know with the original series rank yeah. on it a little bit but yeah. you knew what it was it's some humongous original series blue old science outfit and like well who, yeah. who else would be a huge you know, blue science officer, but the fact that they, they've had the scene, like they were climbing up Mount 50 foot Spock and they were just like wallowing in that blue material background. You know, they had a whole scene and they had their leadership thing. They look at, they're looking at Tendy and Rutherford, like who, you know, who should be in charge. It was like, they stayed on that blue fabric forever. And it's like, they're just rubbing it in your face. that That's what it has to be. And, but it's so subtle. It's like, it's here if you want it and don't worry about it. If you don't know. And uh, right. meanwhile, you're just like dying. Right. It's not crucial to the, the yeah. plot at all. But also, real quick, like Veruvian ore, as Sirach knows, we kind of count these Trekkian names, which are like, they, they say Veruvian ore, mm-hmm. 
or Alvanian wool. It's just some made up thing mm-hmm. with an IAN and then something that we've all heard of. They never say it's right. Alvanian sloggles or something like that because you don't know what a sloggle <laughs> right. is, but you say an Alvanian hawk, you go, oh, it's a hawk. Sloggle. I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we had Beruvian ore was one. Hey, so uh, the only thing I picked up in that episode as far as the collector's thing, sorry to cut you off, Rico, but it was the uh, the Chateau Picard cases. That mm-hmm. was really, that's the only thing I saw. There were st- nice. boxes of the Chateau Picard um, somewhere okay. in that you missed that? Yeah. I missed that. Okay. Like, yeah, like two to two things. stack tall where you could see yeah. the Chateau Picard over whatever was standing next to it. Yes. Yes. That's that's what I noticed. I was like, oh, okay, they got the old cases, maybe you know, some wine. So that was about it. Drinking that wine and smoking them tweeds. <laughs> uh. <laughs> what were you gonna say, Rico? No, I was just gonna say the the lamp behind you with the purple coming out. I don't know why, yeah. but it, it, it has a very uh, uh, TOS uh, mm. type of uh, look to it. You know how like TOS had like all these bright color, like what like one side of the wall would be red while this side of the wall would be green. Why? Just yeah. because that's how they lit shit back then. So yeah, you know. and they used a lot of pastel colors too, a yeah. little bit. But uh, your, no, your I guess. Your- now that you say it, it looks to me like uh, Ratha Khan, where they're in the Mutara Nebula, and you've got the ship silhouettes. Like that's the that's the you're looking close up at the hull of the Enterprise, and the and the Reliance about to come up at it. Ooh. It's that Pepto Bismol pink. Uh, the Nebula is all around them. See, so you can mm-hmm. find Star Trek. In- yeah, this was my version of Black Alert, so that's all I had for it. Um, Black Light it's actually Alert. A- it's a black light alert. Magenta. It's a alert. Veruvian lamp, is what it is. It's a Veruvian lampshade. Just, just be wary, uh, Sirak, if you walk into a room and someone says black alert. Yeah, I, it's happened too many times to me way before the show came on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I'm back to this Sirak uh, reference that you mentioned, Larry, earlier. Uh, just a little quote about who Sir Ak was S U R A K. The greatest of all who ever lived on our planet. There you go. The father of all we became. All right. That's pretty, pretty good high <laughs> praise there. You okay with that? <laughs> I'm all right with that. Yeah. You Sit up for that? Yeah. yeah. You're only like halfway there. You have so much more ahead of you. <laughs> so much more destiny. <laughs> it almost oh, seems man. like Lower Decks now has become a show where Star Trek nerds can kind of almost like keep score it's almost like a trivia night where it's like how many things can you get you know and and you know everybody's trying to outdo this you know and i always go back to (laughs) one of my favorite scenes ever in star trek which is uh data and hutch in starship mine where you know data is learning how to do small talk and he's watching him and and so he you know one guy you know he's like did you know that blah 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 and data's like I did, but did you know that blah, 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 you know, <laughs> that's what it feels like when you're watching Lower Decks, like, you know, everybody's catching this and trying to climb on top of the last thing to add to it. So it's, it's like we need different said, categories. We need like the, what did you get on the first pass? And then mm-hmm. what did you do with the freeze button on the second pass? And, you know, <laughs> it's like a little, yeah, if you really want to make a competition out of it. And oh, it's already been that, made. Except that it's fandom. Yeah. yeah. So let's hear game, you guys though. catch any other references. By the way, um, I heard I heard um, when the collector was talking to, uh, I think to Rutherford, he said, "Take my card. I've got plenty of menageries." Wasn't that a? Oh shoot! Yeah. I didn't even catch yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well I've got done. Lots in my menagerie. Yeah. 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 Excellent he said that, knowledge. right, Larry? I think you, you yeah. caught that too, right? Yeah. yeah. So I figured that was a reference there. Um, that's the only other one I got. Okay. Well, can I just say this is like a mini laugh out loud? Can I just say that the fact they're like Boimler's not there and they're talking about him and they're going that they say that that Boimler had this, but just the fact that there is a class at the academy called Ethics of Collecting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Just uh, uh, you know, speaking of the guy who was running around trying to find a baseball card on DS9, you know, 
Well, I know all about ethics of <laughs> <laughs> On and, and breaking those ethics. <laughs> but it's like in but, a replicator uh, society, the fact that they still, which, you know, they did on the show, they, everybody did that. You know, here's the Buck Bokai trading card and all that. But it's yeah. like the fact that they have an academy, like does West Point have a class called the ethics of collecting? I don't, I don't think they have time for it, but I just, I just died when I heard that. <laughs> Welcome back so they to kind life. Of that a little bit in Picard, I thought, um, when Picard was going into the like hall of fame, like the hall of mm -hmm. collections or whatever it was for the, all the memories of every particular item yeah. when he was looking for all that stuff, it felt like that was Starfleet's hall of collections, right? Yeah. Where they had all their memory alpha. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. 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 Like their Smithsonian yeah. memory alpha. Yeah. Basically. But just the fact that private people would still collect stuff just to brag. And they did this this episode. Well, my collection was bigger than his, but okay, fine. We were friends. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how how cool is seeing finally after thirty something years seeing the Titan and seeing uh, yes little mini adventures aboard the Titan? And I think they're nailing Riker so perfectly with just him. He's yeah. got his own ship. He's all about adventure. Even like the way they draw him, it's almost like he's like, <laughs> he's like let's go, come on, yeah! Nautical beard. It, it's Nautical just, beard it's, yeah. It's great, man. I, I love it. it he's, he, you know, you, you want to see that. I want to see a series, you know? And yeah, I, I've always wanted I, to see that too because I, I've yeah. read the first three Titan books that came out when they came out back in the day. And there were so many characters and they had, so many different aliens and types and species, you know, and it was really an interesting thing. I don't think Lower Decks is really reflecting what was written in the books, but as we know, the books are not canon, so they can do whatever they want with them. But still, that always piqued my interest about the Titan and, and you know, all the hijinks and adventures that they go through. Now we're going to see it through the eyes of Boimler Plate, but good enough, I guess. But it's fun, man, and, and I think it could be... <laughs> It, it could be another series and and mm -hmm. i'd be i think a lot of people would be here for it if especially if frakes is on board and you know it's obviously just like whoops just like um earthquake just like just like lower decks i mean it opens up the possibility of so many legacy characters to fall mm -hmm. through and you know it could be even more serious maybe a little bit more serious not too much serious but you know it, it can have a different flow from what lower decks do. I don't know. They, it's it's a lot like MASH. They find time. Sometimes it gets a little more serious. Like after a while, you're like, oh my God, she's like Rise of Invicta. It's like she's she's psychoanalyzing herself and somebody's gonna get hurt here, you know? Yeah, but yeah. but there's there's some pathos in there that you're not expecting by the time they wrapped up the first se season. You just you're like, once you made peace with the idea that this is gonna be good and you'll laugh at it, and that's all you expect, and then the next thing is, oh my god, they're making you care about the characters. You right. know, it's not just ha ha in a right. well done way and drawn real well. It's it was I mean, kind of amazing. Look, speaking of finale, like, go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, speaking of the uh, the characters and liking the characters, how do you guys feel about Boimler Plate's uh, secondary clone guy? I mean, you could tell which one was the original and which one was the clone because the clone was completely different. And like, you know, they had the funny scene where, you know, the the dumb Boimler, you know, steps for he's like, oh, I thought we were supposed to both do this. And he and the other guy's like, no, nah, I just thought we were sharing like a clone moment or whatever it was. And then he ends up becoming best buds with Riker so quickly. And he wants to be and he's like, have some Romulan ale. Meanwhile, the original uh, Boimler is is reduced back to Ensign and sent back to the trash ship or whatever, you know, the secondary mission ship. Uh, I thought that was hilarious because now whenever they bring that back, you know, he's going to be like a, a lieutenant and then they're going to see him in the third season be a lieutenant commander. You know, he's just going to keep <laughs> flying by. That's true. Yeah, I thought that was a clever way for them to bring Boimler back, actually, because we mm -hmm. were missing him on the show. I felt like there was a certain <laughs> element of the show that wasn't complete without him. Yeah. Because um, his character is so integral to the, the show. He's basically the, you well, know, you, the number two on the call sheet. So, yeah, you knew he was going to be back around. You knew it was going to happen. Yeah. Was, yes. How are they going to do we, it? Yeah. yeah. How are they going to do it? And they decided to do it by, you know, doing the whole uh, Thomas Riker cloning. They cloned, they cloned an episode, which is hilarious in <laughs> yeah. itself. 
because the episode was about cloning. So that's, I mean, that's as, that's as good as it gets. Um, and then they brought him back. So I'm glad that they brought him back. It kind of sucks for Shet because he's, uh, he got kicked to the side really quickly. <laughs> you know, that's my friend. There's my friend. Um, yeah, well, they so do Boimler got done the way he did characters. Mariner. Bo- yeah. Boimler right. got left behind and pushed out the way that Boimler treated the real Boimler right. treated Mariner when he right. left and didn't say bye. You know, mm-hmm. right. It's kind of like he kind of and which is fun to see that bar scene at the end when they kind of dump on him, which was totally, you know, they're happy to see him. But he's dumped. They make sure and let him know they were pissed about the way he left. So that was. I think Jet's going to be kept in the uh, the the tertiary cast of characters, yeah. you know, along with okay. Ensign Barnes, along with Jennifer, the Andorian or whatever yeah. she was. Right. You know, they have, and, and Steve. Yeah, exactly. Steve Stevens no. apparently is his name. Uh, the guy that was the, the cat's name on this show, the doctor cat, Ta'ana. Yeah, when Ta'ana said, This is not the first time that I brought back a stuffed animal or something like that. I <laughs> a puppet, the that's the first time, <laughs> puppet. yeah, with a sign on it says, Please do not play with it. I thought that was <laughs> that was a nice little joke, Can't right you, there. And and Miglamo is in this, and he's in he, I what dawned on me was he's sitting in the old council, like Troy's chair, like right, the one the bird the, left guy. Of the captain, yeah. You know, oh, and what about data? All he wanted to do was feel. It was such a yeah. Right. This well, was the doctor that it, used the uh, fruit metaphors or whatever it was, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, this yeah. one actually, oh, yeah. had, if you think about it, they had Boimler on the Titan with the adventure, and then you got the foursome uh, on the collector ship, and then you also had the Captain Freeman little. They actually had three plots going, and mm-hmm. and the and the C plot was her and her her uh, her performance review about how right. she's supposed to be hands off minutes. and yeah right and that side by that side eye when she says i don't micromanage anything and everyone just kind of looks away so here we go yeah. here are go ahead Sirac, because i'm about to hit a bunch of information so let's first oh uh, okay so i'm just going to make a reference about the joke they said they had string quartets wow what a rush play me a concerto the they they made a little joke about the the theme music for mm-hmm. uh, the shows, which was kind of uh, a funny little self deprecating joke. Uh, but I really but really quickly, I just wanted to bring up the point that I thought was really kind of lost in all the humor, and that is that there are certain people aboard this ship, or, and just in life in general, that feel like they're not able to speak up and talk about whatever their solutions are to problems because they're outranked by somebody or their boss is, mm-hmm. you know, shut them down. And I thought that even though it was very briefly touched upon with um, Tendi and Rutherford kind of saying, hey, we have an idea, but you guys never listen to us. I felt like they touched upon a, a real serious issue that a lot of people have solutions for things and they have good ideas and sometimes are overlooked in life. And I just felt like, you know, we need to bring light to those people and they need to they need to have the courage and the opportunity to speak up um, in different moments. You know? Right. So that's, yeah. that's two cents on that. Good leadership see, includes the, listening to the other people. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, see, that's the deceptive part about lower decks because you can actually take a real kernel of a human, you know, a life lesson away from it in the middle of your thinking, you're just enjoying this cartoon. And you, right. yeah, it was great. And it was a great character thing because Boimler, I mean, uh, Mariner and and Jet both kind of shut up and looked at each other like, oh, yeah, they're totally right. <laughs> yeah, right. It's yeah. true. Yes, you could get a good kernel of truth out of there or a corporal, a major, whatever you want. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we should. Call, sorry, Rico. Rico looked like he almost passed out from how bad that was. <laughs> He's like, he got woozy. He got woozy. It wasn't exactly a private. I know moment. Rico's yeah. tune out face. That was his tuning you out face. It was very good, Rico. Very good. Thank you, thank you. you the know, reason so. I don't recognize it is because that's the only face long he has around me. <laughs> uh, you know what? I was just going to bring up a, what what some of the uh, the fans and friends said, but I feel like this should be called called like a segment called like Nerd Alert, right? Because Nerd Alert is when all the all the references come out. So, associate producer Anne Marie Seagull says, and I missed this. There's a Betazoid gift box. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
which was right. The silver yeah. face that was Armin's first role, actually. His first role was as that, you know, thing where he's like, ah, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. in the next generation. Um, I was in the collection. Yeah. Yeah. Because at first you could see it. And at first I thought it was like a TV. I thought it was like a, a 90s plasma TV or something or not a plasma, but, a you know, a big a skinny TV. And I thought, well, that's kind of random to have it be a TV. And then there was one angle when you could finally see there was a face. See, it I wasn't the that. hump on a TV. It would have been funny, though, to see a plasma TV. Or like, <laughs> the in a collector's museum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that's a good nerd alert. Uh, she also mentions the game headset that we all mentioned and caught and uh, Kivas Fajo, which was like a Lolita reference. Our buddy Don Crandall, big time nerd alert. He mentions uh, the co-ed shower, which was very similar and possibly a reference to the Starship Troopers. Sorry, the Starship Troopers uh, shower scene. If you remember that one way back in the day, but it was very reminiscent of that. Uh, Battlestar Galactica remake also does co-ed showers. Uh, but then he mentioned the first time we saw that was in the RoboCop movie, uh, who was also directed by Starship Troopers Paul Verhoeven. However, you spell that. Or pronounce that lots of nerdy stuff there he said the giant skeleton right like what you guys mentioned spock uh something i had forgotten was walter koenig actually wrote that episode so that's a nice uh homage to oh. him that was and, his that was his uh, bone thrown because walter didn't get to voice check off in the animated so right they, they gave him one episode <laughs> and the ret law plant <laughs> which is walter's we good backwards. now okay cool yeah he also mentioned <laughs> the abraham lincoln episode that you guys mentioned uh sonic showers he mentioned the same thing you mentioned which was motion picture uh Bailana and an actual shower and enterprise um anyway nerd they, alert they, there they, they should have they should have had a uh a dvd collection of i love lucy mm. oh oh there's never a, been a lucy what should they have had in the collectible section that's yeah. a great question yes yeah, that, they should. They, there has never been a Lucy reference in any of the Star Trek uh, shows or movies. And we all know Lucy's obvious I, connection to it all. Yeah, I think there was I think they were going to go bigger, but they didn't. But I think there's one mention of Lucy when Enterprise is in the fit. You see to Paul's great grand I mean, when the, the secret Vulcans crash land. You're right. I think You're they right. say something about, hey, I don't want to miss I Love Lucy tonight. And it's You're not right. a big deal. They just, they just say it. No, really? There right. you go. Oh. There it is. I think. There it is. I think. Everybody's going to yell no. at me. No, you're right. I, I remember that. I remember that. You just you just reminded me. Because it right. was in the 50s. Right. Yeah. 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 That was a wink and a nod. You're right. I, yeah. I, I missed the that's what she said moment um, when you said, I thought they were going to go bigger, but they didn't. And sorry, Larry. I'm Zip, zing. Zip. <laughs> It's like a flying animated mechleth flying past you. Also, <laughs> uh, quick shout out to J.R. Poole that made this awesome uh, poster for Melissa Longo. Oh, uh, yeah. All the, the women You've of Deep Space that. Nine, but he had he put Lucille Ball right at the bottom there, yeah. which is really cool. Beautifully yeah. done, J.R. Poole. The Black Heroes Movement dot world is his website. Yeah, that's a great, uh, that's a great uh, mm -hmm. make mock-up that he made and it looks great i mean it just ties in all the things at least for mm -hmm. deep space nine um he could do one others. yeah he's done a couple of others he could do the women of trek as well i mean and just have every woman in star trek but that'll be a, a lot bigger picked image but um he's awesome man shout, shout out to jr pool and his uh, his skills but i wanted to say we talked about a little bit about the animation but the animation is 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 awesome especially when they show the ships and the, yeah. the fighting scene mm -hmm. um when they when they show uh freaks on the titan i mean it looks it looks good like i'm like how this will take a while for this one to age because it's it, it's done well enough that i feel like over time it'll still have that appeal to it yeah i love the exterior shots you know we mentioned before yes. how it almost seems like it's a different company doing the exterior shots versus the interior and character shots. And those exterior shots just have such a, a bigger in scope uh, look to them. You know, they just look more detailed and more and beautiful. Realistic. Yeah. There's more realism to 
the to the exterior shots. Mm-hmm. I would agree because right. the the interior, the act, the animated actors look cartoony, yeah. right? You you they, they have that cartoony feel. But when you watch the actual animated, I mean, when the animation for the exterior shots, it you kind of lose the cartoony feel, and it's more it feels like you know CGI ish or something. It looks right. actually pretty pretty realistic. Yeah, I mean, it's you're on the edge of your seat when they're doing the barrel roll and come up the, the yeah. aft. See how they yeah. look with their aft yeah. hanging out or whatever he said. Yeah, yeah. you got your. What does that mean? <laughs> no, it was it was a line in it was a line in the episode. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we're just about it, out of time. Uh, you guys have any final thoughts on this episode? Yeah, I just want to jump in with two it. or three, two or three things from that room before everybody yells. So the, the goofy mask that Data wore in masks is like, that's in there one time. Oh, I didn't uh, there's see a that. caddis cot board. Yeah, it just, it's like one shot and I didn't see it the first time. But there is a, the thing that Naomi Wildman played with Seven in mm-hmm. Voyager. There's a caddis cot game board that, wow. it, that pops up a lot of times. Anyway, there's, there's so much. It's, it's wow. pinkish purple. There's just so much. I don't, I'm, and somebody's going to shoot me here. There was very prominently a couple of like, it looked like red high top tennis shoe sneakers. I want to say sitting next to the Chateau Picard crates. Like Jordans? I was like racing along trying to figure out. They either <laughs> looked like they were lace-ups or it was just some alien thing. But Maybe it was uh, Back to the Future. Obviously. Back to the Future. That's what I was thinking. That'd be a pretty good uh, reference if it was. <laughs> well, it wasn't the Star Trek thing, so I didn't know. I was trying to think Star Trek references. Anyway, there's a ton of, there's a ton of goofy. That'd be so cool. Goofy we'll things. have to the, check the, that the out. The Picard painting is on the wall that he was making in art classes back over on the. <laughs> the oh, really? Yeah, wow. but there's another one that looks like it's a, a naked binar nude with under a drape. There's some alien head under a drape, like it's a classic nude with a drape over it. Mm. But sorry, I missed that one. Alien head that's sitting up on that back wall <laughs> a couple of times. But I was like, okay, you could, but it'll take hours for somebody scour. And some people already have; they're already mm-hmm. got a lot of it. But there's so many wacky. Uh, let me ask you a question, Larry, while you're going through the list. The uh, the sex helmet thing that the uh, alien stole that set off the alarm was that is that a reference from anything or is i think that, that was made up i think that was just totally off the wall yeah the look looked There's good no but sex helmet. there was like blood on you know, it too <laughs> yeah you saw that right i was like yeah. Uh, yeah, it was quick, so. yeah does it give you magical powers and where can i get one um, yeah yeah well you know <laughs> klingon sex is supposed to be kind of da- you know dangerous and oh yeah but there's okay. like okay. there's like you know weaponry at the top of it you know they're the blades yeah. i know one thing you're not going to be doing with those blades on your head <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you batman is not going to wear that one uh rico you were gonna or is he i don't know yeah. i don't know rico you had something to say That's no, I, 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 just in general man I, I i really love this show and i and i love i love all the nostalgia that's thrown out there i mean even in the lines i'm waiting for some little thing where you're going to be like i know what you just said i know what you were mm. referencing all right i just i love what they're doing with it and i love that it's all canon and i love that it's 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 very much it's a fun ride and obviously it's a it's a nod to next gen that that era and i just you know i i, I just think it's a really clever um show that definitely winks and nods to the fans all the time but does it in a way where it's not just throwing stuff in the mix for the sake of throwing right. stuff in there. I mean, there's a couple of times, but but it's still fun. And because <laughs> the show is fun, you 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 let anything go that you could easily, like Ryan does, you know, put on the tie and be like, this, that, shim, 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 shim. <laughs> you know what I mean? So and I appreciate this. I appreciate the show a lot for, mm-hmm. for what, it, what it offers and just all the, you know, and there's so many... <laughs> there's so many ways that you can continue to expand with this and it's it's great. So that being said, before we go, Rico, anything to plug? Where can we find you? You can find me. I am Rico Anderson on uh, uh, Instagram. Uh, Same with Twitter and Rico Anderson on Facebook. My show, Apple TV on Apple TV plus truth be told comes out tomorrow. I play oh. Herbie on the show. Hey. Yes. Stars Octavia Spencer, Ron Cephas Jones, Tracy Toms, uh, Mackay Pfeiffer, 
Um, this is season two. So I'm excited and I encourage everybody to uh, check it out. Damn, and, I'm uh, sorry that this know, episode I... won't air for another month, but otherwise, <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> it airs today. <laughs> no! Then forget everything I just said. Also, um, happy birthday, Gene Roddenberry. Yeah. Happy birthday. Very good. 100. Yeah. Larry, yeah. I'm guessing you may have something to promote or where can we find you? Well, uh, LarryNimichek.com is a good hub. And most of my social is Larry Nimichek's Truckland, but my Twitter is just Larry Nimichek. But yeah, Instagram and Facebook. Uh, Tuesdays, I have Truckland Tuesdays live at 1 Pacific, 4 Eastern, where we just do a topic and go with it with the chat audience. And Saturdays, we have Life Support Live with Dr. Ali and Dr. Trek. One of us mm -hmm. is a real doctor, boldly going. Um, Kind of what we what Sorok did there with that m little moment of uh, humanity there in the middle of the otherwise episodes. What we do with a theme every week, and then the Trek Files, my podcast from Roddenberry. Um, and this week we did a special Gene's birthday, uh, kind of an atypical moment for that too. So that's going on. And this whole live event thing, we we're talking a little bit about Vegas. Uh, I'm going to be at Salt Lake Comic Con. Or excuse me, it's now at Salt Lake Fan X, uh, the middle of September. So that'll be another, and I'm flying for the first time in almost two wow. years. So that'll Wings be a or jetpack? Yeah, 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 I need some gravity boots. I didn't see any gravity Catapult. boots. <laughs> <laughs> you need a net then. Just be. Look. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, we do want to give a very special thanks to Carmen, a.k.a. Skillet, PJ Skillet. Thomas, TJ Jackson Bay out in Missouri, <laughs> Bill Victor Arukin. Arukin. <laughs> Yvette Blackman, Tom, Homer Frizzell, Eve England out in Wales, Dr. Anne Marie Siegel, Dr. Susan B. Gruner, Titus Muller, Tim Baum, John Mann, and Mark Rocco. Uh, I think that's about it, right, guys? Sure, why not? Yeah, that's about it. Uh, I'm good with that. <laughs> well, then that's that. <laughs> All right. So, everybody, <laughs> thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Larry Rico, thank you for playing with us and for giving us about 50 things more than what we had in our notes. And uh, everybody at home, always remember the seventh rule. <laughs>